Hello sweeties. Today I'm going to do a different kind of video. I hope it will be of any interest for those who are knitters. Um, I'm going to show some of my favorite books um, for knitting. So those who aren't knitters, just skip this video. All right, I'm not going to go into full detail, but I'll just show you um, some of my favorite ones. I have not got a huge amount of books, but I have been very selective with most of them. Okay, and I'll first, I'll start off with Anne Bud, and it's the Knitter's Handy Book of Sweater Patterns. Okay, I know it's backwards. Okay, um, these are basic designs in multiple sizes and gauges, and it's an old book. I got this second hand from a, like a charity shop. Um, so they're supposed to be reminder cards in the back. Well, they aren't there, so, but I don't think you need them anyway. Um, right, I just want to flick through, well, what have you got in here, like? A whole list of things like drop shoulder sweaters in all sizes, modified drop shoulders, satin sleeves, saddle shoulder, raglan, seamless yokes, and then different options. Right, and what's nice about this is she'll show an example, yeah. And then how one knits this example. And then you will see, for example, in child sizing, you will see the number of stitches. You will see, see the gauge, the yarn requirement, and how much you will need for what. Yeah? Um, so... This is a really handy tool to have if you want to learn how to do sweaters. Um, these are mainly back and front and sleeves, mainly. However, the raglan ones are done um, from the top down. And I think she's got it from the bottom up. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not not 100% sure. So there's there's quite a few examples of sweaters. Like your saddle shoulder ones. And I know these are really old. I don't know. These pictures are really old. So I think it's from the 70s. Let me have a look. I don't know. But... This particular copy is from 2004, but the pictures are definitely old. But it doesn't matter because the general scheme of things is the same. So she's got a few examples of sweaters and how to knit those. And then she's got in here, for example, if you want a crew neck, a V-neck, uh, turtleneck, whatever, and you can build your sweater if you like. So if you want to learn how to do it, this is a very good book, okay, by Anne Budd, The Knitter's Handy Book of Sweater Patterns. Right, that's my first, one of my first favourites. Next, we'll go on to what you most probably have seen a lot. I don't know if I've mentioned this one before, but this is my absolute favourite. I have about four different kinds of colour work books, but this is my absolute favourite on Fair Isle. And this is by Mary Jane Mucklestone. 200 Fair Isle Designs. Okay, as you can see, I've got lots of tabs in here. And that's only from the last. This is actually the three tabs in there are actually from this jumper that, yeah, the jumper, the sweater. Okay, and I'll just show you, for example, here are the knitted up versions. Okay, I don't want to give away too much. 
and here are all uh, more versions where it gives you the page number and the number of the pattern and let me just look out for you the very a very easy example one of the first as I said I don't want to give away too much and what she does okay if you see that she'll give you an example yeah of the first one there and she'll give you color examples how many stitches and how many rows I absolutely love this there's a history to all the designs in the beginning and then there's a history to color coding how to do it there's a section on wool and how to read oh, that's another it, it, superb example I don't want to give away too much once again but down here it shows you how to read the Jamesons spin drift um, collar wool collar and that's perfect because then you know exactly what to look for and what to look for uh, as in how it's written and then you, you know how to choose your wools then it gives you also an example of how to hold your yarn when you're doing color work so it is very very complete also on how to plan a jumper um, or whatever else you're doing so for me this has been one of the best Fair Isle books um, right that's the Fair Isle one my favorite sock knitting um, book by the way, these that I've shown you up to now, as I said, the, none of these are, uh, are exactly cheap, okay? They're mid-range to what I would call most probably more expensive, but not as much as, for example, the knitter's volumes of stitches. So I would say in the area between £10 and 25 pound per book okay um that's what these cost if you get them new i do always look out i mark what books i'm interested in and then i look whether i can find them in charity shop shops or second hand or things like most of these are second hand i think there's only two that aren't actually Actually, there's three that aren't, and that was the Fair Isle one I've just shown you. The next one is Sock Architecture. Now, this is for people who really want to get into sock knitting. It's about heels, toes, and techniques uh, for knitting all sorts of socks, and this is from Lara Neal. I know it's backwards, but I hope you can still read it and make it out, especially after I've read it to you. Um, <clears throat> so what you do is you choose from 17 patterns and then you design your own, basically. Um, and I'll just show you the patterns. Here are your patterns. And she gives you toe up, toe down, or toe up, top down, sorry. Um, and then, let me just show you. Then she, and she explains how the architecture works. Okay, and then you get features like round heel, half handkerchief heel, square heel, common heel, shaped common heel, modified shaped balbriggan heel, band heel, short row heel, yeah, to name a few. And then she talks about gauge, which is always very important with socks so that they fit properly. 
and then she's got examples picture examples fabulous fabulous pictures so you know what you're doing um on heel flaps on how to do the different heels um wait i'm just looking then for oh you've also got um you know what i the mockers in tow can be done in a different way and she calls it for example the sideways toe heel except for the band that i have going across like this goes with hers like that but <clears throat> Okay, and then you can also, for example, the short row heel, which I use as the flegal heel, you can also do that as a toe. All right, and she explains it exactly how to do it. Um, casting on, and let me see, what other toes do we have here? A swirl toe wedge toe uh, I've got more heels wait let me see round toe so there's loads and loads of examples in here if you're really interested in not just doing vanilla socks and if you're interested in getting your fit perfect for you then this is the book to have it's not cheap so what i would say is think about it i know you can learn quite a lot on youtube and so on so do that first and then if you really like knitting socks a lot and designing then go for this one so that's the sock architecture right and then we'll go into uh pattern handbooks as in the different stitches then <clears throat> this is one three what's it called the knit stitch pattern handbook by melissa leapman uh, 300 designer stitches and techniques as you can see i've been using this a bit as well for designing and we have in here um an explanation as to how to read patterns like that graphs we have in here how to shape how to use patterns and then we well, let me see I just want to pick out something that everybody knows okay uh, not maybe not everybody but uh, here we go a textured rib for example okay here we got textured rib photo and we've got the written up and the graph next to it okay so this book is divided into textured knit and pearl patterns then lace and open work patterns it has cables and cross stitch patterns that section is rather large and i'm not a f i don't do a lot of cable basically because i normally don't have enough wool for it and all the patience because i've got to sit there and i have to really concentrate so i haven't really got the patience for cables um but these are beautiful and unusual patterns in here rather extensive um from easy to difficult and she also gives the number of stitches plus the stitches you have to do and how many rows repeat so all of it is in there so after the cables comes slip stitch patterns which is also a fairly large 
section and some of them are multicolor. Then we have novelty stitch patterns. Okay, and one of those is like small flowers, raised leaves, rainbow ties, and things like that, um, oak leaves. And then we have, once again in the back, how to read instructions and stitch patterns and a lot more helpful tips and abbreviations to everything. So <clears throat> this has been very, very handy and comprehensive also to those who are, um, let's say, advanced beginners and onwards. Then my next favorite knitting stitch book is 400 Knitting Stitches by Potter Craft. And we have in here, once again, let me just pick out, I haven't used this one that often, but I do like it a lot. Uh, one thing I just wanted to show you, a difference here is on the knit stitch pattern handbook that I've just shown you all of the sections I don't know if you can see that are color coded so it's easy to find yeah this one is unfortunately not color coded that well it's color coded but here on the top okay um, makes it finding a little bit harder because normally you page through this way but it is possible and here again let's just show you a one by one rib one by one rib picture explanation and the graph down here in the very small but it is there Okay, um, so you can see from that which direction you're knitting and how many stitches and how many rows. So it is there, but this one has fabulous knitting patterns, but if you can't read well, as in if your sight is not so good, and you like to see the patterns not the written out as in the charts then you will most probably need something to enhance that so we've got knit pearl stitches in this one <clears throat> crossed stitches and cables and i must say um they are a lot of them are different to the ones that were in the knit stitch pattern handbook um, and variations of that so that makes things a lot easier the photos are absolutely brilliant well defined and in color well most of it's done in white anyway but you can really see so after the crossed stitches and cables you get slipped stitches and again different from the knit stitch pattern handbook and I'm looking through there aren't as many uh, multicolor dual or multicolor ones in here than there are in the, in the Melissa Liepman one lacy stitches from the lacy stitches that I'm looking through here, um, they're equally as good as the Liepman book, but different. There are quite a few different ones in here. So it is worth having both books. And then we have here, which I've not seen in another pattern book, is double stitches. 
Okay, for example, the fisherman's rib. And there are different kinds of, of methods. And then we have twisted stitches. Now, twisted stitches is a Bavarian thing. And how shall I say that? The, they can look like cables. So you have twisted stitches in here, a few. And you have cast off stitches, which is also unusual because you don't have, I have not seen a pattern book with many cast off stitches. So that's great. Then you've got fancy stitches, which is like a gathered stitch or a chain bracelet. Or let me see what other one, acorns. So that's just to name a few. So would also recommend this one. This is cheap. This was cheaper than the others. Um, also, but I got it second hand. So just look out. There are. This is second hand. You wouldn't know it's second hand. It's. It looks like it's never been used. Someone bought it and never used it or something. I don't know. So this is second hand. It looks absolutely new. I mean, even, you know, there's no fold backs really. So fabulous, this one. Then my last but not least stitch collection is the Essential Stitch Collection from Reader's Digest. Uh, this has 300 stitches in and it's from uh, put together by Leslie Stanfield and Melody Griffiths. It's a hardback. The others were all soft colours. Soft the colours. Covers, of course, apart from the Ann Bud sweater one. Um, <clears throat> What do I love? Once again, color coded on the side. Oops, sorry. Color coded on the side. Maybe not so visible. Let's try focusing on that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Color coded on the side as well. <clears throat> and here an example of some of the stitches. Okay, once again, uh, okay, I just want to show you here I've got what she's done, which is also brilliant for finding things. She's got in each section, she's got here, for example, her twists. You can select which pattern you want and go directly to the page. Quality of photo work, superb. And then when you go to it, you will find the big, the big photo written up and you'll find the chart in a nice size. So you don't need, I know, looking glass to find it. <laughs> to to read it. Um, so what has she got in here? <clears throat> okay, knit and pearl. Twists, as I just said. Um, then after that she has... Cables of all sort. Although there are also lacy cables amongst here. And there are cables I've not seen before. Okay, there are rather unusual cables amongst this lot. As I said, cables aren't my favourite, but maybe I'll get into it. After that, we have lace. 
And some of these are not just lace, but also patterned lace, which is interesting, like butterfly motifs and lilies, things like that. Um, then we have bubbles and leaves, which reminds me of a jumper that I have upstairs which I haven't worn for a long time, a green one with bobbles. That was, that was knit a long time ago. Okay, bobbles and leaves. And then, then, it's, then a section that I have not seen in any other stitch dictionary, which is all about stranded and intarsia which means a little bit of fair isle a little bit of scandinavian a little bit of japanese a little bit of mm, i don't know like anchors and stuff like that <laughs> i don't know what to call that and crabs so i'll just give you an example Okay, so that's fabulous, a fabulous introduction to colour work. Um, Celtic stuff, so all sorts. And then you've got unusual stitches. And in this section, it's not only the stitches, but also what you work with. For example, she has here... Uh, beads, sequins, and then decorative patches with different kinds of yarns and wools. Um, yeah, and then multicolor as well, multicolor combinations. So something else I haven't seen in the stitch dictionary before. And then you have your letters from A to Z. And also numbers, how to knit those. And ah, uh, that's still numbers. Hang on, I missed it. And then you in the back you've got your knit know-how. Um and what else? Yeah, that's it. And your abbreviations. So, highly, highly recommend this one. Um, can't remember how much this was. But once again, it was under £20. This one was under £20, but it's well worth its money. Hardback. Once again, look for it secondhand. Um some of these I got from UK bookstores, others I got from Amazon, so just check it out. This was the Essential Stitch Collection, put together by Reader's Digest, and the patterns came from Leslie Stanfield and Melody Griffiths. So my last book is... For those who love history, especially in this case British history, this is from um, this is actually from a film that I'm not sure many of you have seen. It was called "Tell Them of Us: uh, World War One and the History of a Family Living Actually Quite Close By from Where I Live." Not uh, like one of the next counties, um, close by counties. Um, this book is historic knitting, but with a modern twist or made to fit modern. Okay, uh, but we're still with the historic look. It is not of the best paper quality 
and it is not all patterns are in the best um how shall i say written f not written format the way it is printed rather than the print itself okay and this is called centenary stitches and it's telling the story of world one of one world war one family through vintage knitting and crochet actually so this is a, a mixture i haven't looked at the crochet stuff yet and as I said, this was by, from the film Tell Them of Us by Elizabeth Lovick. Okay, Elizabeth Lovick. Um, and because I love history of that sort, I did spend the money on this one. This is £20, US dollars about 30 Um. And I just want to show you an example. Oh, I'll show you some of the patterns that are in there in small. They won't give you a good idea, but they'll, there's quite a lot of patterns in here. Okay, and this was published and put together by the ladies who actually made these patterns what they had is they got before the film started they got photos from the family and they had to recreate the looks from the family this is uh, there's a history to world war one um and then a bit about the filming itself okay then the about a bit about the village and the family who were the Crowder family uh, photos okay, this is rather thin paper um, and then how to do vintage garments from cast on to finish so it gives you here an example and how to translate vintage patterns so it does give you that. But now you'll see what I mean. Now, this is an example of a vintage pattern that was used and then translated. Okay, here we go. You see what I mean? <laughs> Not very easy. Okay, I don't think I'm giving away too much there. Um, so, in and then using, for example, old crochet hooks and the measurements of those and the measurements of feet and for vests and stuff like that how it used to be and how you translate that now i just want to show you one big picture and i hope i'm not going to give this away this is for example violet's jacket okay uh that's just one on close up. And then we have, I just want to show you one more example. Yeah, I think you can just about see it. Okay, so this is an old photo from Grace's jacket. That's the original photo. And this is the picture of the translation and the modern knit. Oops. Okay, you see that? So that's what this book does all the way through. There are shawls, what kind of... Okay, let's just review what's in here. <clears throat> I did show you in the beginning. So there are vests, cardigans, jumpers, shawls, uh, hats, socks, mittens, bibs, flowers, toys for children, scarves, um, even 
uh, a rifle, rifleman's glove, fingerless mittens, service gloves, so all sorts in here. I had, I haven't really, I haven't knit anything out of this yet. Um, but I must say, from the flick through that I've done, there are, I would say, 80% of these uh, patterns are wearable today and that I would like to do. Um, there's also, what you call it, muffs and collars in here. I forgot to say that, muffs and collars, or one muff and one collar to be precise. Also, summer hat, ties, the old-fashioned knitted tie. When I say old-fashioned, they're coming back into fashion, really. Um, yeah, so ab absolutely lovely. So this was just put together by the ladies who did it. So this is not really a professional book, if you like, but it has a lot of professional information in there and knitting. And this was done on a budget. And this was done, I think, within three weeks this was put together. Because originally they didn't have uh, the money to put this together on the hard paper and, you know, better copies. However, I think it's absolutely adequate and it's lovely. When I bought this, I didn't have a review and some people were really dissing it. And I thought, I'm not sure that's a lot of money I'm spending there on a book, um, not knowing what the patterns are, because I didn't have much information, only that it came from the film and that it was about a family close by. Close by is relative, but any, yeah, in, in, a UK family and I was interested in the history anyway and I thought well if there's enough history in there I'll enjoy it anyway and it has turned out to be a pleasant surprise so as I said so that's another one of my favorites centenary stitches telling the story of world war one family through the vintage through vintage knitting and crochet from the film, feature film, Tell Them of Us. And it's put together by Elizabeth Lovick. Lovick. Okay, vintage patterns for the modern wardrobe. And I must say I'm pleasantly surprised. Yes, it's not the best paper quality and they're photocopies of, of pictures. But who cares what is important is the information in there and that's been put together very well very well indeed so that's my selection for today it has been a long video so i want to stop it here and if you enjoyed this film lovelies please give me a thumbs up and a comment whether you want maybe some more of this that i can go through maybe another few of the books that i do have and use and maybe some that I don't really use. So leave me a comment down there. I would enjoy having some feedback. That's all for today. Goodbye.